Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here in Mystic, Connecticut once again, and I'm here with Dan Miser and James Wayman of 85th Day Food Community. Now, what's that? Well, it's, I think it's sort of a little restaurant empire that's growing here, and we're actually in one of their uh, new, new shops. It's a pizza place, and we're going to talk about Mystic and what the food offerings are on Insider Travel Report. Thank you. We're here in your new pizza place. Now, what's it called? It's called Nana's Bakery and Pizza. So it's a, it's a pizza shop, but it's also an, an organic bakery where we have sourdough, we have pastries, as you can see right behind you there, um, and a really amazing coffee program as well. Well, organic, that means that, that sticky bun I saw is not going to make me fat, right? Exactly. Okay. Definitely. So, okay, well, I'm glad that, and the pizza won't do that either, right? Well, I've been eating it constantly for probably three months and I'm doing all right. Yeah, no, that's I, uh, that's all I wanted to hear because I know we're going to try to have a little bit after. Now, Dan, tell us about all the restaurants that you, ha you have. This one and then you have three others, right? Sure, yeah. So the 85th Day Food Community is uh, represented by four restaurants. So we have Nana's where we're at now. Uh, we also have Grass and Bone, which is our uh, butcher shop and counter service restaurant. Uh, Engine Room, which is our uh, uh, amazing casual restaurant where we have a huge focus on burgers, usually using uh, locally sourced beef, um, all amazing products and a great bar program, cocktails and beer in particular. And then we have Oyster Club. Oyster Club is our flagship restaurant. We're going into our 10th year here. And Oyster Club uh, really represents in Connecticut um, one of the, the, the better restaurants and more celebrated restaurants, quite frankly, in the region and the country. Well, I know I, I was lucky enough to try Oyster Club a few weeks ago. You fed me very well, probably not too well. I kind of rolled back to my inn afterwards, but I, I made it through the meal and it was amazing. I really thought it was a... Now, James, you, you have a lot to do with this food, right? You, you, you're looking at all these restaurants. Uh, sort sure. of amplify some of the things that you do at each restaurant. You mentioned this one. Uh, let's start with, with uh, Oyster Club. Tell us what the cuisine here is. I was really astounded. It's not just like an oyster place. It's amazing and also amazing oysters. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, and thank you. So when we opened Oyster Club about 10 years ago, the idea was to kind of showcase everything that the region has to offer. Right. Now, oysters are a huge part of that. Um, and then on top of that, we have this incredible fishery of Long Island Sound. Um, and, but one of the things people don't know about this region is that there's incredible farms. Um, so you have the ocean, and then you have this amazing farm community. So the idea behind the Food at Oyster Club is to create a dynamic menu sourced from these local farms and these fishermen, and it really changes not only, you know, people would say restaurants change seasonally. I would say we change micro-seasonally. It changes by the day, by what comes in that day from a farmer, what's the best coming out of the fishery that day. And, and that's the inspiration for that. Well, I even had a steak there. And in fact, that you, 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 I said, you know, I'm not going to look at the menu. You send me whatever sure. you can. And it was an amazing meal. Talk about the, 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 uh, the second restaurant that you want. Either one. Um, sure. We'll, we'll go in order. So Engine yeah. Room was after our second place after uh, Oyster Club. And as, as Dan said, it's this kind of big, vibrant uh, bar scene focused on the burger. Now, the cool thing about that burger is um, it comes from right down the road from uh, Briar Lewis Farm in North Stonington, a farm that's been uh, raising beef cattle since the 1600s. That's amazing. And so, you know, all, all locally sourced. And, and finally, the, the, well, we're not going to, we, you talked about the pizza place earlier, but the third one is? So that's kind of an extension of that idea. So Grass and Bone is the, is the, the other one um, and, and our third restaurant. And the idea there was to create a whole animal butcher shop. Um, so, once again, getting into our local food economy, supporting local farmers. We have incredible beef, pork, chicken, all sourced from the region. And attached to that butcher shop is a uh, small, also casual, at this point pretty much takeout, but we do have some indoor seating, um, restaurant focusing, um, uh, offerings of rotisserie chicken, sandwiches, um, some raw meat stuff, which is super interesting. Oh, wow. Um, we do, yeah, we do a really cool uh, raw beef poke bowl. Oh, there. that's great. Now, Dan, uh, why Mystic? Why here? Why did you start all these things? Uh, in, 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 for the two of you started these things here. Sure. Well, well, both James and I um, spent an extensive amount of time working in Connecticut restaurants. 
Um, I spent years working in the greater Hartford area at some really fantastic restaurants there. And James was at River Tavern, which uh, was really the first restaurant in Connecticut um, that, that highlighted and made a real effort to source farm to table. Um, so when, when James and I teamed up uh, almost 10 years ago, you know, Mystic for us was a real opportunity because one, um, it's, it's beautifully situated, like James said, on the coast with access to some of the best seafood in the world, but also some of the, the oldest um, and, and most amazing farms and artisans in the whole region. But there was also a real need. There, Mystic's always had a lot of restaurants in town because it is a tourist destination, um, but it's never had restaurants of, of the caliber that we wanted to open. So for us, there was a real opportunity there as well. No, it sounds like, and it sounds like you've made a great home. Now, you, the first restaurant was, you just began when? Uh, 2011. So it's really, you know, it's only been about 10 years now, a little less, nine years, and uh, and you seem to be doing great, and now you got this place. And, and don't confuse this with the famous Mystic Pizza, which I think does exist downtown. I'm sure they're fine. This is a little bit different. It's a little, a little down, but everything is close by, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and that's really nice for us to have this group, this community of restaurants that are very close. We're all very interactive um, with each other and we're all connected with each other. No, it's great. Now, also, so how have you been dealing with the pandemic? Uh, obviously, we're all wearing masks here and you have your logo mask. I got to get one of those. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, obviously it's been tough, although you seem to have several outlets that are pretty, you know, takeout. And so that, that probably sets you up pretty well, right? Yeah, I mean, look, this, the, the pandemic uh, has been brutal on the industry as a whole, um, but, but here in Mystic, uh, certainly this summer, we saw an incredible outpouring of support. Uh, as far as the four restaurants go, there's no question that Grass and Bone and Nana's are designed and set up um, to weather the pandemic a little bit better, better uh, than Engine Room and Oyster Club because of the heavy focus on to-go takeout, but also on the market side of things. You know, a huge part of our program here at Nana's is, is the breads. You know, we have an incredible bread program um, where folks from the community come in and this is where they stop for their bread every day. And at Grass and Bone, you can go in there and yes, you can get a rotisserie chicken to take home, but you can also get, you know, a beautiful pork chop, local produce, local cheeses, other artisan products. So, so being able to kind of span the market side as well as the restaurant side has allowed those two outlets of Nana's and Grass and Bone to, to be a, letter, a little bit better situated uh, given the realities that we're living in now. No, that's great. You sort of the right time, right space. Although I got to tell you, I had a wonderful meal at o Oyster Club, even indoors. Uh, uh, there was socially distant and you guys were great. Um, and, and it just, you know, I, I still think it was a wonderful experience. Now, uh, so they're all close by. Uh, I used to think of Mystic as, oh, Mystic Seaport. That's it, the Mystic sure. Seaport Museum and maybe the aquarium. Sure. Um, and then downtown has a wonderful area of shops and everything else, but it sounds like you guys have really made this a culinary destination too. I mean, it's, it, it really is, right? Absolutely, and, and uh, it's something we're super proud of, is kind of creating this food community here and also kind of you know amplifying the other people around us as well. There's some amazing food artisans in the region, uh, Mystic Cheese, a uh, wonderful guy named Brian Civitello. Um, there's some cool projects like Seacoast Mushrooms. Uh, Chris Pacheco is, is growing uh, organic mushrooms out of uh, shipping containers in Pawkatuck, which is really cool. There's some great breweries in the area. Um, so there is this kind of whole food scene developing here. Which is, which is super awesome. Well, so it's a great reason to visit Mystic. And I remember you, you were telling me, every, every course you delivered to me at Oyster Club was, uh, you gave me the whole lowdown of the sure. whole thing. I think I, I, need, I needed to like take a, a tape recording of that because it really is amazing. Uh, what's your favorite thing else to do in Mystic? I mean, for me, and, and I would say probably for Dan too, it's, there is an incredible outdoor aspect to this area. Right. Um, um, we're both big fishermen, so there's a Long Island sound going out uh, and fishing. Dan's a hunter, um, so there's great hunting. I'm a huge mushroom forager, so I spend a lot of time in the woods here. Um, so for me, 
um, and I don't want to speak for him, but I, I just love being being outside. Great. And Dan, what about you? What's yeah, I mean, I would say one of the beautiful things about Mystic is this balance between the ability to, to have a vibrant business community, but also a real quality of life. You know, this is this is still small town USA. And because of that, when folks come from all over the world to visit Mystic, it's our hope that they fall in love with that charm, that small town charm. And like James said, you know, whether you're a sailor or a fisherman or the beautiful beaches or, or the amazing state parks and, and farms and fields that we have around here, there's incredible opportunity to, uh, to do more than just eat in Mystic, but we always hope that uh, come lunchtime or dinner time, you'll come back and see us. Well, you got, you got about four choices here now and, and maybe more to come. Who knows what else you got in mind, but uh, anything else you want to tell our travel advisors out there that they can tell their clients about Mystic? Um, just come see it for yourself. It's a beautiful place to be. Um, if you flip that camera around, you'd see we have a beautiful, gorgeous view of the water here. Um, so, you know, come check it out. And Dan, anything Yeah, else? I mean, I, I would just say that, that Mystic, in the 10 years that we've been here, we've really seen it grow up. And, and not only is there a vibrant restaurant community, but there's amazing arts. There's now a wonderful place to stay downtown in the Whalers Inn. So all the components for someone who's looking for a great weekend getaway or a week with their family, uh, places to stay, places to eat, things to do, places to visit, we have that now. And uh, we hope uh, folks will come visit. Well, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to talk to me. I, I, I had the, the dinner with you uh, a, few, a month or two ago, and uh, I felt I had to come back, because it was too dark then to do the video, but uh, uh, I had to come back and give you a little more here, because it really is an amazing destination, and we're all looking for domestic destinations now to sell. And Mystic has always been there, but now you've got a whole new reason to come to Mystic to try some of the stuff that these guys have put out. Uh, amazing restaurants, uh, amazing for your clients. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm James Schillinglaw, reporting from Mystic, Connecticut for Insider Travel Report.